All right, good morning, guys. It's about noon time. Uh, I'm heading over to the train station and I'm gonna go take a ride into KLCC, right into Kuala Lumpur. It's kind of first day out in Malaysia. Uh, really looking forward to exploring and you know seeing a different country. When you get off the uh, the LRT off the KLCC station, you actually end up right at the Petronas Towers. Right there behind me. Now you know the Petronas Towers, right? If you've seen that movie um, with the uh, Catherine Zeta Jones, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that one. Trap it. That was the first time I've ever heard of, of Kuala Lumpur. It's a young lad. And uh, always wanted to see the Petronas Towers in person. Well, pretty sweet. Because uh, here I am now. Well, I'm going to try to make it back here tonight and get some, uh, some nice pictures at night when all the lights are out. But during the day, it's pretty it's equally as impressive. Inside the Petronas Towers is um, it's actually a mall on the first floor. It's a pretty swanky mall uh, in air condition. So it's probably a good spot for all the uh, locals and tourists to hang out. It's pretty hot outside, actually. But yeah, you've got all your high stores, Chanel, Prada, um, Boss. <laughs> Not today. All right, but I'm gonna get out of here because I see way too many malls in New Jersey, and this bundle looks pretty fancy and pretty big. It's not my cup of tea. Alright, so right behind the Petronas Towers, there is a park. And there's just all trees everywhere. It's pretty nice, pretty lush, pretty tropical. It's pretty cool. Also, they seem to have um, some kind of water park. Kind of like a, it's not a pool, it's just like a little, very, a very shallow pool. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna go in there because I only have shoes and socks. Uh, I think I need some slippers to go barefoot in there, but I think it's a nice outdoor thing. I've never seen anything like this actually in any kind of city. I'm not sure if it's the most hygienic, but it's <laughs> still so pretty, uh, still so neat. But this guy is getting in trouble getting yelled at by the security. Not supposed to be doing that, dude. All right, so I've uh, kind of walked around a little bit and I found my way to a place called uh, Bukit Bintang, yeah, which is kind of a big shopping area, again. So many high-end shops here in Kuala Lumpur. See a lot of like, you know, Coach Balenciaga, Really fancy shop. I guess if you like to do a shopping or do a lot of window shopping. Alright, so I'm still on a mission to find uh, some food. But more from a local food court. Food stall, something like that. Nothing that, uh, kind of one of these small type places where I can pretty much get Western food. I don't want any of that. Alright, I found my way to this place. I think it's the, uh, there you go. The uh, 33 food court, but it's packed. I guess it's pretty pretty good, but it also is around noon time, so it's lunch time right now. Can't find a seat, so I'm gonna just keep going and try to look for something else. All right, I smell a lot of good food around here. Maybe I'm at the right spot. So I was just craving some Indian food, so I just want to start off the day. Actually, it's already lunch time with some roti, some fresh roti, and some chicken curry sauce. And some mango lassi. Cool meow. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh, man. It's really refreshing. Pretty much like a mango shake. Mango, a little bit of milk. Oh, wow, it's delicious. Gotta go for another, another sip. Now uh, let's take a dip in some of this uh, roti. I think they just made it. A little bit in the sauce. Mm. Alright, let's go for the big bite. Let's go for the big bite. Mm. Mm. Well good. 
extremely chewy. It just soaks in all the juices of the chicken curry sauce. Really delicious. The mango lassi, the roti, and the chicken curry only cost me 8.8 ringgit. Really delicious. So the conversion rate here is about 4 ringgit to uh, 1 American dollar. It's very good. Ready to move on. Made it to uh, Pedaling Street. Basically the Chinatown of Kuala Lumpur. Because every place, every city has a Chinatown. So I'm gonna check it out. See if I can buy more food. Check out some goods. Probably won't get anything though. So never buy anything from these flea markets. But I will buy food, that's for sure. <laughs> behind me is the, I think it's the Masjid Jamek, which is one of the oldest mosques in Kuala Lumpur. I think this part right here is closed off for construction, as you can see right behind me. But I'm gonna go around and see if I can, if it, sh it should be open, so let's go. All right, I guess we're out of luck. Uh, so it turns out that they are closed for visitors because they're under construction. As you can see behind me, uh, I really didn't want to explore the mosque and check out the beautiful architecture and this is one of the oldest mosques still in Kuala Lumpur closed for construction uh, to visitors so another time I guess another time all right guys so I'm here at the Merdeka Square so this is a landmark square where the Malaysian flag was first raised. So it has some prominence and some historical significance to Kuala Lumpur. And it's situated right in front of the um, Sultan Abdul Samad building, right here. It's you know, the Office for the Ministry of Information, the Bureau uh, of Reports of the Country. So, you know, government offices situated back here. Mosque of Malaysia, and because I'm wearing shorts, I have to cover up. Hi, my name is Michelle. It's Michelle, the new friend Michelle from Japan. Hi, guys. It's my first time actually ever being in a mosque. Very tranquil setting. I think as tourists, though, you're not allowed to visit the main prayer hall. To, you know, you're allowed to visit the rest of the premises, and also there are only certain times when you can visit the um, the mosque outside of the normal praying hours. So it's really nice that they open up the tourists, so at least someone who is not Muslim can experience and just kind of get a feel of how it is to be in one of their uh, houses of worship. And really, the architecture is stunning. It's very beautiful. Really, a uh, sense of peacefulness. Just a sense of cleanliness here. Very, very nice. All right behind me is the National Heroes Mausoleum. So they have their prime ministers of the past buried in this mausoleum right here. Hear nature. You can hear the birds chirping around the uh, the mosque. Almost a stark difference from when you step right into the city and you hear all the cars and buses. It's real quiet and almost a glimpse into nature out here in the city. It just doesn't seem like it belongs here, but 
It's really quite worth a visit. I just got out the uh, National Mosque of Malaysia. That was a really awesome experience. I've, like I said, I've never actually been to a Muslim mosque in my entire life. So that was really, really uh, interesting and authentic experience for me. Um, you know, having, not really knowing much of the Muslim religion, but to actually be in one of their, you know, I guess their places of worship and being able just to kind of be in the presence of of their, you know, their religion. It was really nice. It was really nice. I was just walking past this, just walking down the street and someone just kept calling for something. I wasn't sure what it was, but I think she was calling at me. I turned around and I left a dollar. I, and I guess a, a dollar, I mean, one ringgit fell out of my pocket. She was chasing me just to let me know that it fell out of my pocket. Wow, I mean, that's really nice of her. I mean, so far, all the people I've been here in Malaysia are extremely nice. I'm not even quite sure why um, it gets a bad rap for being kind of, you know, not safe, but people are genuinely just very, very nice. So, yay for uh, Malaysians. during the day, but it's awesome at night. And I think the rest of the people <laughs> think so. The place is packed full of people. Tourists, locals, whatever. Pokemon players, but yeah, everybody's out trying to get their pictures. And you can only imagine why. I mean, look at this. Okay, now she won her solo. Got him away. Yep. That's Beyonce right there. She don't want no part of Destiny's Child. Wow. Whoa, talk about full on Vogan for the camera. Yes. So we had a really full day today, checking out other spots and other sites, and also doing a whole lot of eating at Peddling Street. So I'm probably gonna call it a night and head back to my Airbnb. Um, so, in the spirit of entrapment and Sean Connery, I'm going to tell you guys, let's get lost and wander again some more. Tonight. Hopia. Alright, we just got some, uh, that was Hopia. Look at a fresh spring roll tray with vegetables. There's just literally way too much stuff here. Hey. That was the worst Sean Connery impersonation ever. Oh, seriously. 